Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Good afternoon. I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. And together we're back. Yeah, our musings broadcasting live from the People's Republic of California. As always, well, not always, but that's our base unit, right? And we're right. still talking science and technology. Yep, absolutely. And we still want to know about those Sasquatch, if you saw them in the last segment. Oh, yeah, the Jaguars, right? N new research indicates that erythritol... A sugar substitute commonly recommended for individuals with obesity or diabetes may carry unexpected health risks from low-carb ice creams and keto-friendly protein snacks to sugar-free sodas. Erythritol is a widely used sweetener found in countless diet and specialty food items. I'm going to check all my labels now. Totally. I'm going to like aspartame is, a, is the one that we watched out for. And that's, that's in a lot of sodas. I wonder if it's... What if they use it here in the U.S.? Maybe we just anyway. need to go back to tab. Or just original. sugar. Just sugar in moderation. Yeah, I guess. However, new findings from the University of Colorado Boulder suggest that this commonly used sugar substitute may carry unexpected health risks. According to the research, erythritol can affect brain cells in ways that may increase the likelihood of stroke. The study was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. Would you like to know more? I wonder if they use mice to test this. Mice, lab mice. Quote, our study adds to the evidence suggesting that non-nutritive sweeteners that have generally been purported to be safe may not come without negative health consequences. I don't know of anyone that, that's safe that I've heard about. Says senior author Christopher D'Souza, a, pro a professor of integrative physiology and director of the Integrative Vascular Biology Lab. Okay. Oh, he's up there. Yeah. Erythritol, a sugar alcohol that was first approved by the Fru Food and Drug Administration in 2001, is typically made by fermenting corn. It is found in hundreds of products and is popular for several reasons. It contains nearly no calories, <clears throat> delivers about 80% of the sweetness of regular sugar, and has little effect on blood sugar or insulin levels. These traits make it especially appealing to people focused on weight loss, low-carb diets, or blood sugar management. But, but like any sugar-free or low-sugar item, that doesn't mean that you can eat the whole box of Oreos. Why not? Or, or drink not? the whole case of soda, right? I mean, you mean like in 30 minutes or in Well, however you weeks? do it, yeah. Like you, you can't, just because it's sugar-free, you know, you eat a handful of, and I'm not telling y'all how to eat. You can eat however you want to. But you eat a handful of Oreos or you eat a whole box of Oreos and... And I'm not an Oreo guy. Well, I like the gold ones, but not the black. Not the ones. ice cold milk. Yeah, got yeah. yeah anytime I eat some sweet, I gotta have milk. So, but that's for another segment. But recent research has begun to shed light on its risks. One recent study involving 4,000 people in the U.S. and Europe found that men and women with higher circulating levels of erythritol, erythritol, were significantly more likely to have a heart attack or stroke within the next three years. D'Souza and first author Auburn Berry, a graduate student in his lab, set out to understand what might be driving that increased risk. So okay. I'm going to spell out erythritol. So you, if you want to do erythritol, so so if you want to do research, it's E R Y T H R I T O L. So if you want to do your research and start looking your looking at your uh, labels, that's how you spell it. Okay. Research in the lab treated human cells that line blood vessels in the brain for three hours with about the same amount of erythritol uh, contained in a typical sugar-free beverage. They observed that the treated cells were altered in numerous ways. They expressed significantly less nitric oxide, a molecule that relaxes and widens blood vessels, and more endothelin-1, a protein that constricts blood vessels. Ooh. Meanwhile, when challenged with a clot-forming compound called thrombin, Cellular production of the natural clot-busting compound, T-P-A, was, and that's a lowercase t, uppercase P-A, was, was markedly blunted. The erythritol treated cells also produce more, uh, also produce more reactive oxygen species, ROS, or AKA free radicals. Metabolic byproducts which can age and damage cells and inflame tissue. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't. No. Quote, big picture, if your vessels are more constricted and your ability to break down blood clots is lowered, 
Your risk of stroke goes up, said Barry. Our research demonstrates not only that, but how erythritol has the potential to increase stroke risk. D'Souza notes that their study used only a serving size worth of the sugar substitute. For those who consume, here we go, for those who consume multiple servings per day, the impact presumably could be worse. That makes sense, right? The authors cautioned that their study was a laboratory study conducting on, conducted on cells and larger studies in people are needed. That said, D'Souza encourages consumers to read labels looking for erythritol or sugar alcohol on the content. I've never seen that. I mean, sugar alcohol, that's from uh, manufacturing alcohol, right? I mean, they, that's the, yeah. That's what makes it sweet? Well, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, but yeah. Mm. Quote, guess. given the epidemiological study that inspired our work and now our cellular findings, we, we believe it would be prudent for people to monitor their consumption of non-nutrient sweeteners, such as this one, he said. I wonder if NutraSweet has that. We use NutraSweet in our uh, cacao. Well, it has aspartame in it, I think. And that has been proven over the last couple decades to be not good for you. And that's in almost, I mean, you look at a can of any kind of diet soda, and that's got that that sweetener in it. And it's not, uh, I mean, they sweeten low, or what is the other stuff they have? Uh, I don't mean to be throwing out brands here, but they're sweet and low. The package stuff, um, it's in a little pink package. I forget what it's called, but. All those things, yeah. It just—it's almost better, I think, if you just—it's like the butter margarine thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. The margarine's got some chemical type stuff in it, and believe me, I've eaten a lot of both. But we've gone back to eating butter now um, because the hydrogenated uh, oil, I think, in in uh, the margarines or the fake butters, it's good. It's la it lasts longer in your refrigerator or wherever you keep it, but. But yeah, all those, and what's the the fruit, the high corn syrup, fruit, um, fructose? Yeah, fructose. That's not supposed to be good for you. That's why they say, that's why you can still buy some sodas with sugar in it, but you usually pay more. Mm. And you go south of the border, all their sodas are all made with sugar. Mm. Like the red dye, right? Canada, we did a study on that, yeah, right? Yeah, we Didn't did we away, a study? Like, or with not a study, dye. but a uh, segment on that, where the red dye, yeah. Canada's, Get rid of the red dye, or they don't have it as much. Or JFK in their stuff. too is doing it. Yeah, get and, rid of it. and it's taken a while, but yeah, why do we have to have that stuff in there? Two or different R RFK. I'm sorry, RFK, RFK. Yeah, Junior, and the cereals. You know, there's a, it's like a cereal. It's like California fuel. There's California fuel, and then there's everybody else's fuel. And why do they do that? I don't know why. Uh, so anyway, all right, folks. Thanks for joining us. Take care, everyone. We'll see you on. Oh so, yeah. Enjoy your Sabbath. Yeah, enjoy your Sabbath day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.